<laughs> hey guys, Forever Kid here. Um, I'm working on this tune here. Um, I actually just started it. And I figured since uh, I was going to do a tutorial on this anyways, and I was kind of starting to do it, that I would uh, kind of show you guys some stuff um, involving building your own drums and <clears throat> drum sounds, because that seems to be one of the biggest things that I personally see lacking in a, a lot of, um, you know, up-and-comers productions. Um, just an example here is I made this kick just now out of these three kicks that are in this rack. Um, basically what I do is I just grab kicks out of, uh, you know, in this instance I took some kicks out of this uh, Hit Kit 3, some real kicks and then uh, I took some vengeance kicks and I know everybody disses on vengeance sample packs or whatever but come on everyone uses them and it's the best sound and stuff um, plus if you're making your own kicks out of several layers it's not going to be noticeable that you used a vengeance kick anyways um, it's my phone so I'll show you how I made uh, this kick really quick um, Actually, yeah, I'll show you how I made this kick really quick, and then we'll make a snare. Um, so once I've got the kicks that I liked, um, I make a new audio track, and I send those to that audio track, which would be here. We'll solo this stuff. So really all I need is one of those. And what I do is, um, you know, I layer those kicks up and get them how I want them. And, you know, sometimes I have to EQ um, certain parts out of the kicks. Um, sometimes I turn up the velocity and I dick with all this stuff. For some reason, these three were just, like, giving me exactly what I wanted right off the bat. Um, so this actually ended up being really easy. And what I do is I drop in a compressor, and some people multi-band the kicks together. Um, I typically don't. Um... You know, I just set the compressor, you know, at like a 4 to 1. Um, you know, I squash it about negative 60 dB and, <clears throat> you know, a quicker attack and a quicker release. Um, another trick that sometimes I do is, is I build fundamentals. I learned this from my friend. I build fundamentals out of uh, operator and I load those up. Um, wait, yeah. Um and that's at 200 hertz actually it's a snare and so what I would do is I would drop that thing down to where it's probably hitting about 100 and I know that sounds really freaking ridiculous right now but that you can even make it a sub um, that's what's gonna like punch through your your baseline. And when that's all compressed together, it's real nice. So what I do is is uh, I just record that um, to the track. So there I got this. So I no longer need that. So now I'm working on this guy here. And uh, SPL. There's several different transient shapers. I use SPL. Um, and they have a transient designer in here, and I really like it. And I I'll load that thing on. Whoop. And I'll basically just design this thing to sound the way I want. And you want to watch this little guy right here. Because you'll see it. See how it's, now it's overloading. You don't want that. And then, you know, listen for sustain. And then you gotta think about what kind of track you're doing. Are you doing a dubstep track or an electro house? In this case, I'm doing like a 110 sort of, it's gonna be kind of ambient and kind of funky. So I don't want like a super, super hard kick. You know? But I still want it to punch. You know, that sounds pretty cool. Um, a lot of times something else I'll do too is, uh, 
and I haven't been doing this as much now because I, I do put sausage fattener on my uh, drum channel later anyways, but you can, if you need to do some extra work to it, you can put that on there and get, you know, a little bit of that excitement. and Like I said, it depends on what kind of kick you're trying to make. In this case, I'm not trying to do that. So that sounds pretty good. So then, you know, so I got that on there. So you can either flat, you can either uh, freeze this track and flatten it. What I do is I just, I don't know why I do this. Um, so I can go back, well, just so I can go back and fix it really quick if I need to, but let's record it to a new track. And, oh. and there is, I don't need this guy anymore. Reverb hanging. There's my kick. Let's see how close I got it to sound like that other kick. Actually, I might drop that one in there too, just because it's got a. This. Yeah. So then I drop. So once I get my kicks made, I will not need that anymore, and I drop them into. I start making a drum rack. Um, you know, I start making a rack to put the drums in. Sometimes I do the, uh, um, sometimes I do the snares and the kicks and stuff on all separate, uh, separate channels. Um, that can be a little daunting, uh, to when you go to mix. Um, so don't always do that here. Let's build a snare. Um, let's build a snare drum. So, yeah, I have Vengeance House Essentials 3. There's actually one in here. I really love that snare. Always love that snare. I have a little easier time building kicks since I'm super picky about snares, you know? That one's kind of cool. I just sort of just listen to stuff that I think is going to fit the track. That one's kind of cool. And, you know, I, I pick about 10. That's kind of, might want something out of there. I pick about 10 snares um, to do, to make it out of. And I use this hit, I found this hit kit thing, hit kit version 3. Um, and it has some really awesome drum sounds in here, and it's a very real. You know. I usually always you put a 909 in. Um, not always, though. That's kind of cool. Um, so like that, and then I'll grab that... Uh, where is it? Um, here's like one of the. That's a 909 I made a while ago. I usually layer that in there. Whoop. That's a cool, like, drum and bass sounding snare, but not in this case. Then I want that fundamental thing again. It's right there. Let's see what I can build out of. I want that transient. Let's see what I can build out of that. Um, see if I can get what I want out of that. So, you know, nice and long on this one, so you can get the cave. Definitely want that in there.
Something else I always like to actually put in there too is uh, even if I don't use very much of it, I do like to put a clap in there. Um, especially if I make an electro house, but pretty much with anything, I will put a clap in there. That's kind of cool. Um, and I'll usually make the clap, you know. Which ones am I using here? And this is where I'll, you know, like I said, I'm get super picky with the snares. I'll go in, I turn the velocities up on all these now, everything that I'm using. And then uh, I turn all the volumes down to, and this is kind of a pain in the ass. Um, that's why it's good to, like, you know, if you're just hanging out and you're making snares. You know, make a bunch of these things and export them all to a folder. You know, I have a folder that's all my custom-made drum sounds. Um, even though I kind of do like to make new drums for every single tune. Always turn that fundamental up more. Uh, another good plugin to have too is I know we're spending a lot of time on this, but I think this is important. Um, is Voxango Span? You can Google it. They have it for Mac and for uh, <clears throat> Windows, and it's and it's a really it's free, and it basically shows you you know obviously where your frequencies are hitting, like that fundamental that I had made out of Operator. You know, it's just a it's just a G note. And that was hit right at, see it hitting right at 200. You want your snares typically to be between 200 and 250 hertz. Um, and you want your kicks, you know, right around 100, 150, you know, depending on what you're making. If you're making some electro house, you might want it, you know, somewhere, you know, around like 90 hertz. Um, but in this case, uh, we're making a snare, one at 200. And I can see where everything's hitting. And see, it's, it's hard right there at 200, which is great. It's a little rolled off right here. Although snares can typically get kind of muddy in that region anyways. And I'll start going here and fine tuning. I think that clap's hitting too late still. Sometimes you want to move these snares so they're not all hitting at the same time. Definitely that one, though. It's way too much. That's getting pretty good sounding there. You see where we're hitting here, just a little bit over 200 hertz. Um, you know, there's some there's some crud in there that if you want to take out, I mean, you can. You know, you can just 
you know. You know, if you want your snare like that, sometimes I, I like there to be a little bit under there. That sounds like that kick. Yeah, sounds pretty good. So what I'm going to do at this point is, you know, I could spend a lot more time on this snare, and I probably will, but for these purposes, to show you guys, I'm just going to hurry this up now. Um, let's record that. Actually, I want to compress these together first. Um, you know, same deal. You know, these are just, use your ears when you're compressing Turn this to negative six. So there it is. Now grab that transient designer. That dog winding in the back. Hear what a difference that makes? You know, there's a lot of tail there, and I, I like that because later I might take that, you know, I can, I can take that out or use it. So say I like that, then maybe we'll try that sausage fattener on it. And I generally use this thing pretty lightly. See, because it can get obnoxiously stupid. I feel like that thing's got some thwack. So, you know, if I'm happy with that, I will do that again. That nice big pig snare transient, nice and and where did I put that? Oh, you know, I think I did. I stuck it here. Did I really? Well, anyways, I loaded over my kicks. So that's why I keep that there. Um, like I said, then you have your snare and you load that into a drum rack. Um, just drag it straight in. You know, turn up your velocity and uh, that's how you make some uh, some kicks and snares.